Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the 3 a.m. Knitter podcast, episode two. My name is Anne, and I am joining you today from Picto, Nova Scotia, which is on the north shore of the province. It is a balmy minus one degree Celsius today. A little bit of snow coming down, but you know, it is winter, so we really shouldn't complain, should we? So, a little bit of housekeeping. You can find me on Instagram as 3AM Knitter. If you need to send me an email, you can drop me a line at 3AM Knitter at gmail.com. So, how are you? How has the last couple of weeks been for you? Have you got a lot of knitting done? I've got some done and I'm going to share it with you now. So, what am I wearing? So I'm going to start with this, uh, with this shawl kind of collar here that I've got on. So, <clears throat> pardon me, this here is a project that I knit, oh, a long, long time ago. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, I knit this back in... 2020? 2013, excuse me. 2013. <laughs> yeah. So at one time I fashioned myself as, um, you know, I was going to wear all knitwear. I was going to be an independent dyer. I was only going to knit with my own yarn, you know, those kinds of things. After this project, I, I realized that I am not a dyer um, and I just want to knit with all the pretty things. So, that being said, this here is the Dry Heat Shawl by Sarah Wolf. So, it's more, I did it in fingering weight, it's more of a shawlette really. So, that's why I wear it as a scarf. Uh, so, you can see, you know, this. This was my own dyeing, and believe me, this is all totally by accident, the way that the colors pooled here. Uh, so the shawl has, um, you know, this nice little lace pattern at the bottom. The top edge also has uh, some yarn over, so it's a little bit of open, open work at the top. Um, triangle, kind of with the, you know, I mean, it's, it's really quite a, quite a lovely shawl to knit. Um, albeit I had, um, had a little bit of problem with the short rows because back, you know, back in 2013, um, I, I didn't know what a short row was. So I was trying to follow these, um, these, these instructions and it didn't work very well. Uh, so the notes that I have here, I knit this on six millimeters. Um, I named this colorway, I belief. Uh, so, um, my Canadian friends who are NHL lovers will know what I mean by that. Um, I am a true blue Toronto Maple Leafs fan, and so I was trying to, uh, you know, get a, a Toronto Maple Leafs blue here. Uh, my notes that started in October or October 29th of 2013 read that I um, I bought or I bought the pattern right away. I picked this hand dyed out of my stash. Um, named I Belief. It's working out perfectly because the Maple Leafs were playing that night and then I put in a PS that they actually won four to nothing, so that was a bonus. Um, finished the chart relatively quickly, a couple of days. So, you know, this bottom part here, that part there was finished. Um, and what I write here is that I hate the short rows. So there must be short rows in here somewhere. Um, should be binding off today and blocking. I can't wait. That was November 11th. So really it took me about 12 days, 13 days to knit the shawl. Uh, later that day I posted it's blocked and drying um, and that I would probably uh, re-knit the pattern in another weight, maybe something heavier. I have not done that. Um, but, you know, I, I may go back to it. Um, the project, or pardon me, the pattern is by, as I say, Sarah Wolf, Dry Heat. She um, suggests needle sizes of ranging from four to six, depending, of course, on the yarn that you use. Um, 440 to 550 yards, or 402 to 503 meters. Um, and if you know you are going to use lace weight, she is suggesting the 525 yards. 
Yeah, so it has uh, charted and written instructions. So if you're not a chart person, no worries. She has written instructions for you as well. So I was really happy, really happy with this. It's the perfect size for me for a scarf. It is too small for me for a shawl. So, um, yeah, so I think if I uh, use a heavier yarn uh, to make myself a nice winter shawl, that, you know, I mean, I'd get the size that I want. Or I suppose, I suppose, if I'd have to relook at the pattern, but I suppose I could, I could just make this larger. I don't know, I'll look at the pattern and, and, and see. Yeah, so that is um, the dry heat shawl or scarf. Um, and I love it. Toronto Maple Leafs, go Leafs, go. So I'm just going to put this aside because I also want to point out that I am wearing the Esme sweater. I have finished this test knit and uh, I will talk about this a little later when we talk about finished objects. But I just wanted to point out that I finished the test knit and oh, I just love this sweater. So Let's move on to uh, current, current works in progress. So you will recall, uh, perhaps you will recall if you've watched episode one, that um, I pulled a project out of Whip Mountain over there and last week and um, promised, okay, promise. Do I wanna say promise? Hmm. I gave myself the challenge of finishing this project that is seven years old by episode three of the podcast. So I still have a little time, but I wanted to let you know that I did get some work done on this. So uh, you may or may not recall that this is the Suburban Prairie Socks. And they are there. Uh, and this is a design by Prairie Girl Designs, Susie White. You might remember uh, Susie had... Um, Susie and Danny had a podcast, uh, an audio podcast a number of years ago. So uh, this is a grape sock pattern. So you, you will remember if you watched episode one, I had the ribbing done and, you know, I had maybe about this much done on the sock. So since I last uh, chatted with you, I have got all the way down, did the heel flap, and I'm now working on the gusset. I've turned the heel um, and just doing my decreases so I can finish the foot. So I think, you know, I'm pretty safe in, in keeping my goal of having this finished by the next podcast, by episode three. Uh, and I will, I will let you know, I will let you know then how I make out. So, um, Actually, I think last time I podcasted, I didn't even have needles in these socks. So um, I have made a great deal of progress on these. But I did notice something that kind of perplexed me um, as I started working on these. Because as I was picking up the stitches and trying to find where I had left off in the chart, I want to show this to you because it, it is a paid-for pattern, um, I realized that... For some reason, I cast on for 62 stitches. I don't wear a 62 stitch sock. I usually cast on 70 or 72 um, because I'd like my socks to be not falling down, but just enough to stay up. Do, do you know what I mean? So for whatever reason, I cast on 62 stitches for these socks. Um, I'm too far gone now to change it. So I'll finish sock number two, I'll block them, and I'll see. These might end up being gift socks. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but uh, I'm quite pleased that I've got to work on these again. And you know, as with anything, um, they'll be done lickety split. So especially now that I'm finished this test knit, I can really focus on getting um, getting the socks done. So stay tuned in episode three uh, to see what happens with those. All right, what's next? So I made no progress, no progress at all on my um, 
Noctua sweater. I haven't even picked it up. Um, actually, it's still right down here beside me uh, from episode one. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to work on it because I was trying to get the uh, test net finished. I haven't worked on the eyelet pop top. I'm still super undecided about the yarn in that one. So uh, you may recall that I'm using Patton's DK Super Wash on that and I'm not liking the way that it feels in my hands right now. Um, I'm hoping it will soften up once I wash and block it. But if any of you have used that yarn, please let me know. Actually, do I have? No, I don't have it handy. Um, oh, yes, I do. Hang on just one sec. Okay, so if any of you, oh, it's a little dusty. If any of you have used this yarn, Patton's Classic Wool DK Superwash, can you let me know if it softens up? It doesn't feel bad in the ball. Maybe I just need to go up a, a needle size. Maybe I'm using the called for needle in the pattern. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do a couple swatches before I continue on. But if you've used this yarn, let me know if it softens up, okay? Uh, because I would love to know. Um, so anyway, no, no progress on that. Um, I haven't done any of the 2023 mini blanket either. Again, I was finishing up this and um, finishing up uh, another FO that I'm going to share with you in a minute. So no time for the mini blanket. Um, and that's really, that's it for the, in, the works in progress. So that being said, we come to my finished objects. So of, of course, there's this beautiful Esme sweater. So this test knit uh, is for a Coco Amore Knitwear, the Esme sweater. There we go. I anticipate that this pattern will be launched in March sometime. I don't have an exact date, but um, I will let you know when, when uh, she, she tells us when it's going to be. Uh, the test is still ongoing. It's it's not wrapped up quite yet, so it'll be a bit yet. So let's take a look. So this sweater has a beautiful rolled collar. I think in episode one I called this um, a hem. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, stockinette stitch panel in the front and the back. So the front and the back uh, match uh, with this wonderful ribbing detail here. The sleeves are ribbing, and the ribbing goes all the way to the side here. So it's one of those patterns that once you get it set up, you can read the knitting with ease. So you, you know, it's a great pattern to work on when you're watching TV or something like that, because you can read, you don't need to be referring back and forth to the pattern. So you can see, you know, the sleeve detail here. Oh, it's just amazing. So it's made with a lot of positive ease. Um, it's got one by one rib. I think if and when I knit this uh, again, I will, um, I'll make the, make the hem here a little bit longer. I may very well go back in and just um, pick, pick it back up and knit that a little bit longer. I don't mind, I'm going to stand up again, sorry, I don't mind the length, but um, I don't know. I think because of the, the ribbing here, I think this might, aesthetically, I might want this longer. The only modifications I made to the pattern is I knit the sleeves uh, shorter than were called in the pattern. I like a shorter sleeve. I wear a lot of jewelry, a lot of bracelets. Uh, things like that. I have my eye watch on all the time. And I like my sleeves shorter. And I figured um, better shorter, then I can you wear a longer sleeve, you know, like a, a turtleneck or something with long sleeves or a t-shirt with long sleeves if I want something a little longer. Or this will give me excuses to wear some fingerless gloves or things like that. So I knit this um, out of Estelle Worsted instead of the called for yarn. 
I didn't use the called for yarn because I, I couldn't source it here, right? So all told, um, I knit the largest size. So there are one, two, three, six sizes. I knit the largest size. Um, let's see. Yeah, three millimeter and 3.5 millimeter and four millimeter needles I used to get gauge. All told, I used 1,222 meters of Estelle worsted, which was, um, I had about 89 grams left of the last skein. So it cost me around 63, 64 Canadian dollars to knit this sweater. Um, it's got short rows in the back, which, you know, just talked about short rows. But over the years, I you know I've, I'm starting to perfect it, but still I'm not really pleased with, with um, with my short row technique so I'm really gonna have to practice that um, but there there it is so will I knit this sweater again absolutely I will knit it again um, I think that it is uh, it's a great knit and uh, I look forward to, to casting it on again I'm sh quite certain I have lots of stash here that I can use uh, to knit it up um, but yeah, if you want something a little more luxurious, she uh, has suggested a, the designer has suggested a fine merino uh, paired with a mohair. So wouldn't that just be nice and fuzzy? But this Estelle Worsted is super soft. It's, it's just, it's lovely to work with and it feels really soft. So the Esme sweater. So you can check out, um, Check out Instagram if you want to see some of the other versions of this that were knit, uh, especially the versions knit with the called for yarn. You can just take a look for hashtag Esme sweater. Uh, that's what we've all been using during the test knit. And again, the designer is Coco Amor Knitwear, and you can find her on um, Instagram as well. So, really super pleased with this. Um, amazing finished project um, and a great sweater. So, loved it. Pick that up if you're looking for a great sweater. So the second uh, finished object that I have to show you is um, a knit along that I was part of that was being hosted by my LYS, Natural U Yarns, here in Picto, Nova Scotia. So they are uh, holding something called the Year of Adventurous Knitting. So we'll be doing four knit-alongs during the year. And the first one was the, is this that I'm going to show you now, the Coffee Break Shawl. So I used uh, stash yarn for this. Um, and I'm super, super pleased. I just cast it off and I bound it off rather and um, blocked it. Uh, yesterday, so it's still a little bit damp, but I just wanted to show you guys this this so here it is here the coffee break uh, coffee break shawl um, So it uses one main color which is that dark dark tealy blue there and then five mini skeins so really really great um, project if you've got minis in your stash So a lot of garter stitch sections, which is great because a little bit of a break. Then it has this great brick, uh, brick stitch, I think it's called, section, and then smaller sections of, of ribbing. So I was unsure about that yellow, but I, I think it works. What do you think? So I am super, super happy about this project. So the pattern, there we go. So I showed, I showed you this last episode, but uh, there it is in more neutral, neutral tones there. It's a really super pattern. Let's see. It's a pattern by Margaret. Let me just, let me click on that. Cause is it just Margaret? Yeah, just Margaret. Uh, username Heidi and Lana. All right, so pattern was published in September of last year. 
It's worked on fingering, uh, 3.75 millimeter needles, about 924 yards, 845 meters. I have no idea what, what I use. I used minis. So I just figured if I ran out of a mini, I've got all of those minis in my stash, I would certainly find something else that I could put in. It is a paid for pattern, it's eight US dollars. Uh, the coffee break shawl features a perfect blend of color and texture making, uh, making it relaxing, fun knit for the coffee break moments in your life. Um, finish measurements, wingspan 70 inches and the depth at the deepest point 15.5. Um, so I am super, super pleased with this. Um, I know that the other people uh, participating in the Cal, just looking through their, uh, looking through their color choices is just so inspiring, and I just am super pleased with um, the colors that I chose. I think this is great. It's gonna go great with my winter jackets, um, and it's just such a great way to use up those minis. A lot of interest in it doesn't and I didn't get bored knitting it at all so again coffee break cow and if you're interested in checking out the year of adventurous knitting I'll put a link below in the um, in the show notes uh, linking to the Facebook page for the year of adventurous knitting that my LYS is hosting um, so I'm excited to see what the next Cal's going to be because as I mentioned there's going to be four this year so this was a great project I'm super super pleased with that so that's it for finished objects um, I want to talk to you about you know Whip Mountain again so I'm working on the socks and I I think that last episode I made a commitment to have those done by episode three so I think that my progress so far, I'll have no problem getting there. Uh, episode three, I will have those finished to show you. So as I was looking in Whip Mountain for today's um, project to share with you, I came across, I actually came across three projects that I wanna share with you today. So let's start with, with the first one. So I um, knit this really cute little pair of fingerless gloves. Um, I don't have a tag or the yarn for these, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure they're, it's Koigu KPPM. And it's kind of, kind of pinks and grays and greens. Yeah. So just a you know small small little mini kind of hand warmers um, what I realized as I tried them on oh what's this oh there we go is that um, I didn't cast off correctly so this is a little bit tight so I, I will probably undo that if I can't find uh, any leftovers of this yarn I'll use a contrast and um, loosen that up a bit. But here's the thing. The only thing that needs to be done with these is the, technically, you know, I am gonna, I am gonna work on that cast off, but the ends just need to be wound in. I am ashamed of myself. These have been sitting in that whip mountain, I don't even know how long. And all I needed to do was weave in the ends. That's, I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> so stay tuned for these next episode. Um, I will commit to getting these done by next episode because that's just terrible. And then, oh yeah, I came across another pair. So these ones are a little bit, um, which one is this one? These ones are a little bit different. Again, I don't have, I actually have the ball of yarn with these. So this is kind of, you know, grays and pinks, little pops of um, burgundy somewhere in there. Really, really 
nice detail on the front. Yeah, so again, you know, feeling this, I obviously didn't know, this, these, these must be old, these two, because I didn't know how to do a stretchy bind off. So I'm going to have to undo that and um, redo the bind off. These are a little bit longer. Got that nice detail on the front, but all that has to be done on these is the thumb and the and the ends woven in again I'm ashamed of myself so I'm making a commitment oh I like the way the pink showed up on that yeah I'm making a commitment that these two pairs of fingerless gloves will be completed by episode three so so far that's going to be three finished objects that I have to show next episode. I don't know. Seriously. But the main project that I have pulled out um, for you to consider, please, <clears throat> is, let me just find my, my notes. There we go. So this is the Silver Fur Cardigan. And it's by uh, Carrie Knits. Um, let's see, the pattern was published in June 2019. It's a DK uh, knit on 3.5 millimeters. There's lots of sizes. It's a paid for pattern, $9 US. Um, fitted silhouette, set in sleeves, V neckline, cables emerging from the sideways knit hems along the center front edges. Larger cable panel accents the back. Nine sizes offered in the pattern. Um, finished bust measure measurements, rather, ranging from 30 to 62 inches. So it's a um, lots of sizes available. Um, two construction options available. Why I decided to do it piecework, I will never know. Anyhow, um, it's a lovely, lovely um, cardigan. There's my picture. <laughs> so here's the thing. I have all the pieces done. I just never put it together. So here is um, one of the sleeves. I actually started, right? Because, you know, like I've got it, got it seamed. Um, here's the sleeve detail. This is being knit out of Beehive Astra. Patton's Astra, excuse me. Uh -huh. And I have a ton of it right here. So I even kept the wool with it, right? Nice stitch definition. Um, I even started attaching one of the sleeves. Oh, Anne, Anne, Anne. All right, so here is the front detail. You can see right here, isn't that lovely? So the uh, hem, hem or what would be ribbing is picked up is knit this way and you pick it up so this is just garter it's a neat detail and that's the same with the sleeves so the sleeves have they're done in garter and then you pick it up making a nice ridge detail here um, so there's that that's the front and here's the back. I mean, isn't that nice? Look at that. Look at that. Cables and, whew, that's that same detail that's in the sleeve right here. So really for this, all I have to do is sew the sleeves on and then pick up for the button band and the collar. And yet I, I put it aside. So. I cast this on in Mar the end of March 2020 and the idea was that I was making a whole outfit. I was going to make this, this cardigan in that grey and then the pattern, the silver fur set, comes with like I think a hat and a, or a headband and a cowl and gloves and the whole bit. And then I was going to make the accessories out of all different colors because this is a you know the gray neutral I could match it with tons of different colors 
So I knit on this until I started it on March 29th, 2020. I finished all the pieces on May the 13th, 2020. So I knit it relatively quickly and then there it sat. So here's the thing. When I look at the sizing of this, I, I don't know if once I get it fit, finished, I don't know if it will fit me. That's my guess. Even after blocking, I mean, it's, it's, it's shaped and everything. Oh man. So I don't, I don't know that it will fit me. So what do you think? Should I finish this sweater, this cardigan and gift it? Or should I just frog it? What do you think? Let me know what you think. So this is what's on the table this, this, this episode, the silver fur cardigan. So if you take a look, there's not very many projects. I think there's, it shows eight, seven or eight projects on Ravelry. Um, I'm one of the projects. So um, there's lots of notes there. Let me know what you think. I'd like to finish it. It's a, it's lovely. I worked hard on it, obviously, up to a point. Then I set it aside. But, I mean, just look at that. Isn't that great? Yeah, all right. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I don't know. Seems like an awful lot of work to frog, but I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that. So, anyhow, there's that. So, what's coming up next for me knit-wise? So, I am uh, jumping on the Ranunculus bandwagon. I think I might be the only person in the knitting verse who has not knit this sweater. I, I don't know, but I've just been commissioned to knit it. So I have to knit it now. Um, I'm actually looking forward to it because, you know, every time I look at the pattern, I think, you know, that's, that's a really pretty pattern. Why haven't I knit that? So I'm quite certain, I'm quite certain that you've seen this before. You know, it's got great, great yoke detail. So I'll be knitting that. The yarn is um, headed its way to me. Um, I'm using fingering and mohair held together. I don't know the colors yet because of course the yarn hasn't arrived, um, but I am knitting that for the lovely Jody of the Grocery Girls. So stay tuned for my progress on that. Can't wait to get it cast on. So it'll actually work out well that I'm finishing up these, um, these, uh, and the sock right now because I think if that yarn comes in this coming week then I won't be rushed to finish some big projects and I can get cast on for that um, commission knit right away so there it is so today I wanted to share with you um, some of my favorite podcasts now I know that there are so many podcasts out there and I watch a lot of them um, but there are three or four that are my absolute favorites and I do not ever miss an episode. Um, I watch them while I'm knitting. I watch them while I'm taking a bubble bath. I watch them, you know, while there's other programs on, on the TV in my living room. Um, I watch, you know, I download them and watch them when I'm traveling, etc., etc. So those podcasts are, um, they give me such inspiration for my knitting, they get, you know, when you, sometimes we lose our knitting mojo and when that happens, you know, just seeing somebody work through some, a beautiful project or talk about some gorgeous yarn will kind of get me going again and, and want me to pick up my needles. So one of my real, my most recent favorites is the Sunday Knitting Society. So this podcast is, I mean, Chelsea of the Sunday Knitting Society, she's a scream. I just, I love her. She's got this huge back, back wall of yarn, which I just, oh, just, ooh, squirrel. Like, look at all those great yarns in there. Um, love, love, love her podcast. Most recently, oh, by the way, happy birthday, Chelsea. Um, today is your birthday. Hope you have a wonderful day. So most recently, she's talking about budgeting 
and about how she realized that if she moved things around in her budget, she could pay off her student loan. Now, I don't have student loan, but um, I'm always aware of how much money I have on these shelves, right? How much money I have up here in, in Whip Mountain. You know, the money that has been spent on yarn that has not been used. Um, yarn that I bought just because it was pretty. Now, there is something beautiful in that, but if you're not using the yarn, I'm finding it harder and harder to justify adding to it if I'm not using it. So, I talked a little bit about this at my knit night on Thursday. And one of the ladies that was there said, you know, I don't have a stash. She said, I don't understand stash. She said, if I find a project that I want to knit, I look at the pattern, it says that it needs this much yarn, I go buy that yarn, I knit the pattern. She doesn't have a stash. She doesn't have one extra ball, skein, hank of yarn anywhere in her house. This fascinates me as well. Um, clearly I'm not that person. So, you know, when Chelsea's talking about re or just looking at her budget in a different way, I kind of thought about that and I thought, you know, what would happen if I too didn't buy any yarn for the foreseeable future, used the yarn that I have here, um, now, a lot of this stuff I bought for a specific pattern and then never knit it. So do I go back to that pattern or do I find a new pattern for that yarn? Because perhaps if it's yarn that you've had in your staff for, stash for ages and ages, the pattern you thought you wanted to knit with that yarn is no longer your style. Um, it just doesn't fit your lifestyle anymore. Um, you don't like the colorway anymore, you know. So what, what do we do? What do we do with our stash that way? How can we manipulate our stash to number one, revert or you know, resend our money to somewhere else and to enjoy what we've got already? What do you think about that? How many of you have stash? How many of you have stash that you look at and you know darn well that you will never use it? Can you get rid of it? Can you open up space in your storage? Can you knit down some stash? You know, how do you handle that? I'm interested, I, I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. So share what you do with your stash. How do you treat what's going on? So Chelsea, thank you for sharing that, that idea. Thank you for planting that idea for me to you know, take a look at how much money I'm spending on yarn for projects that I know I will never knit. A good thing to think about. So Sunday Knitting Society, check her out. Um, next, Leanne from the Knitty, Knitty Stew. I love this podcast so much. As a Canadian, I find this podcast fascinating. There are lots of places in our huge country that I have never visited before and it's such a joy to watch the Knitty Stew podcast because as you may or may not know, Leanne is a flight attendant. So she travels to different places in Canada, and she takes the time to share where she is. Not only is she sharing, you know, the local yarn stores that she comes across and hopes to visit, she shares the community, right? And, and it's nice to see a little bit of footage of places that you've never been. So check Leanne out. She's, it's such a good podcast. Um, I love every episode. I learn something new on every episode and I'm, you might too. So check, check that out. The Nitty Stew Podcast. Uh, next on my fave list is Hawthorne Cottage Craft with Kate. Oh, I could listen to that woman for ages. So this podcast of hers is just amazing. I watched her Christmas, um, Christmas vlog and it was such a joy to not only see you know the regular podcast where it's all about the creating and the knitting and, and things like that but just to learn more about these wonderful people who share so much of themselves right 
it was great to to see some of her surrounding countryside and um, she always just shares something wonderfully uplifting and again a joy to listen to so check out Hawthorne Cottage Craft and then of course we all know the grocery girls I have watched every single episode of the grocery girls right from day one and these guys just make me laugh out loud it is it their podcast is amazing so if you haven't had the opportunity to check out the grocery girls podcast please do um, you will not be sorry you will not be sorry so those are four of my faves um, check those out and if you have favorite podcasts that you'd like to share let me know because I'm always looking for um, some new ones to watch okay so let's get into the knitters Oracle today so there was a comment on um, episode one about where I got the Knitter's Oracle uh, Tarot. Uh, I will put a link to where I got this in today's show notes. So watch for that. Um, I love this deck. It's just so fun, isn't it? All right. I'm going to split the deck. And I will pick. Oh, there we go. So today's card. is the pattern the pattern so let's see what we can learn about the pattern <laughs> okay the pattern represents information knowledge and education Oops, sorry. <laughs> this card speaks of guidance, mentors, and the revelation of truth. When this card turns up, we should be ready to learn. Hmm, it may even give us a hint as to the source of the valuable information we will be receiving. The pattern. Guidance, mentors, and the revelation of truth. Information, knowledge, and education. Isn't that what the knitting community is all about? Sharing our knowledge, sharing information, getting guidance, having mentors. Isn't that what this is about? I love this card. So maybe take some time to think about who your knitting mentors are, where you're getting your, your guidance for projects or you know, um, skills that you need to learn, stitches that you need to learn, techniques. How are you sharing your knowledge with the crafters around you? Do you have a knitting group that you go to and generously share what you know? and also have that given to you. Isn't that kind of what a pattern does? It shares the knowledge, the pattern. That's a great card. Lots to think about there. So think about that. Let me know how you share your knowledge. I'd love to know. I love that card. <laughs> so before, <clears throat> before we finish up here, I wanted to share with you that you might recall last podcast I showed you my project bag by my favorite bag maker Be By Design. Uh, my friend Bridget from um, from Ontario. She has an Etsy shop which I um, linked in the show notes last episode, but I will do so again. I noticed that she was having a sale. She was selling off uh, some of her remnants. Uh, I'm I'm assuming kind of like our discussion on stash. So she could make room for new fabrics for, you know, the new line of bags maybe coming this year. Um, or, or she just needed to make room, right? So she was selling off some stash. So I got lucky and I purchased these two pieces of fabric from Bridget. This is the one that my um, project bag is made out of. I have um, Notions bags and... Another 
I think I showed you this last time, project bag made out of that one. So they're quite large pieces. And I was thinking, I was thinking about making curtains for the front of my stash um, shelves. You can't see the one over here, but there's the same one as this over here. Just to kind of neaten up my space. I love seeing my stash, but I also have this thing about order. So I was thinking if I made curtains to hang on front on the front of those, that it would <clears throat> minimize my space, minimize, <clears throat> excuse me, the the visual for me, if that makes sense. What do you think? What do you think I should make with these? Can you give me some ideas about this? But now it's a um, it's a it's a nice fabric. It's not light. It's 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 got some got got some weight to it. Um, so if you have some ideas, would you share them with me, just to um, let me know? And maybe we can come up with an idea together. So I'm very excited to use this balls of yarn fabric somewhere here in my craft room. Yeah, excellent. Okay, all right. So today I would like to um, remind you that uh, at the end of March, um, episode that will be um, coming live on the 26th of March, that will be the first episode or the first segment of The Power of Sticks and Strings. And my first guest on that episode will be a woman from the UK who has used knitting to help her through grief, the loss of a loved one. Um, her story is powerful and it really shows the connection between creating through your knitting and helping you through perhaps these worst times of your life. So I encourage you to stay tuned for that at the end of March. And also, if you have a story that you think could help people that surrounds your knitting and helping you through a, a turbulent time in your life, send me an email, 3amknitter at gmail.com and let me know about your story and perhaps we can have you share your story on uh, a subsequent episode of the podcast. You know, when we share our stories about things like this, it only serves to help. And part of our journey through life should be helping others, shouldn't it? So if you are called to share, please do. Please reach out. Let me know. And we'll jump on a quick chat and um, we'll talk about the possibility of having you on as a guest on, on a subsequent episode. So today I'm going to leave you with a wee bit of a reading, some food for thought to take with you from one of my favorite books, Zen and the Art of Knitting. So this is a book uh, by Bernadette Murphy uh, that I've had for a long time. It's well loved. It's got sticky notes and highlights all in it. And this is a book that explores the link between um, knitting, spirituality, creativity, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so I'd like to share this with you uh, today as we finish up. We slow down as we knit. Our breathing and heart rate drop and knitters who've been at it a while experience a trance-like state that provides the same benefits as other forms of meditation. Unlike other forms of meditation though, when all is said and done, knitting produces a beautiful, handcrafted, wearable work of art. Each garment reflects its unique moment in time and is a singular and is as singular in its construction as the person who knit it an image of its creator's spirit what are you knitting today that shows your spirit i hope that you have a fantastic rest of your sunday and a great week We'll see you in a couple of weeks with episode number three and some more finished objects. Keep knitting.
and take good care.